This video is made possible by Anchor. More on that later. Over the last 20 years, a slew of ever lighter, ever more powerful rechargeable batteries has enabled the rise of smartphones, miniature high definition cameras, drones, commercially competitive electric cars, wireless headphones, and so on. So are we moving towards a future where the entire planet is battery powered? There are two big factors that'll determine that possibility. One, how light and energy dense we can make batteries. And two, whether we'll even be able to physically manufacture enough batteries. This video covers part one of this question, and Brian of Real Engineering is covering part two. We'll link to his video at the end. Okay, so batteries have been getting better and better, and nowadays they can store over twice as much energy per kilogram as in the 1990s, which means that they're half the weight for the same energy stored, hence all the drones and smartphones. So what's the limit to this trend? Batteries are in principle fairly simple. Take two partially dissolved metals, one whose atoms want to dissolve more and give up electrons, and one whose atoms want to deposit back on the solid bit but need spare electrons to do so. When you put these two together connected with a wire or some other conductor, they'll satisfy each other's wants, either dissolving more or depositing more and sending the electrons to each other along the wire. Voila! Electricity. And if you force electricity backwards through the wire, they'll reverse their dissolving and depositing, which we call recharging. The intrinsic limits to how lightweight batteries can be are imposed by two factors, the weight of the materials you use and how much energy they give off per electron traded. So you want the lightest materials that produce the most energy per electron. Metals from the left side of the periodic table like lithium, sodium, and beryllium really want to lose electrons, while atoms from the right side like fluorine, oxygen, and sulfur really want electrons, and atoms close to the top are lighter weight, so we can just slap together lithium and fluorine and make a perfect battery, right? Unfortunately, no. Lithium and fluorine are just way too reactive. One of the only well-documented practical uses of a lithium-fluorine reaction I could find was an incredibly powerful and dangerous rocket fuel. In practice, the electrochemistry of batteries is incredibly complicated and requires combining metals that work together chemically, electrically, and controllably at normal temperatures and pressures. For example, oxygen is a gas, sulfur is a horrible conductor, and sodium needs to be molten challenges to using any of them to make batteries. The current standard for lightweight, rechargeable, and commercially safe batteries uses lithium and graphite on one side, with a variety of options for the other side, often lithium cobalt oxide. Lithium atoms are what either dissolve or deposit in order to transfer electrons, hence the name lithium ion, while the other materials are dead weight along for the ride. I mean, they play important chemical roles, but they greatly increase the weight per electron transferred. So how much lighter will batteries get? Theoretical calculations put the minimum possible weight for lithium-ion batteries at around half what they currently are. A lighter candidate currently being developed is the lithium-sulfur battery, which has less energy per electron than lithium-ion batteries, but lithium and sulfur are lighter than lithium and cobalt, oxygen, and carbon, so a battery with equivalent capacity can in principle weigh around a third as much. Even better, lithium-oxygen batteries, while still an incredibly far-off technology, are theoretically four times lighter than lithium-sulfur batteries. But that's pretty close to the limit for chemical reaction-based batteries. There aren't really any materials that give off more energy per electron for a given weight than lithium on the dissolving side and fluorine on the depositing side. And a lithium-fluorine battery, as dangerous and impossible as it is, is limited to only be about 10% lighter than a lithium-oxygen battery. So the theoretical lower limit for batteries, period, is about 5% of current weight. But that's an incredibly long shot, everything works out perfect world scenario. More likely is that we end up combining pretty good batteries with supercapacitors, fuel cells, hydropower, and other mechanical energy storage types. And airplanes will probably always have to use some sort of hydrocarbon fuel. Or maybe we'll finally figure out fusion. Okay, so here's an example of some of the amazing battery technology we have available today. It's crazy small and light. It's essentially eight of these and some very clever circuitry. And it has enough energy in it to charge a smartphone about 10 times or to run this LED light bulb for about 10 hours. Although you can't actually plug the light bulb in to this to this outlet. The makers of this ridiculous battery pack, Anchor, are also running a ridiculous contest where they're giving away 10 prizes of $2,000 plus a battery pack. They're asking for video submissions about a time when you ran out of power and it was awkward or unpleasant. Maybe something like when Apollo 13 almost ran out of batteries. Or maybe something a little more mundane, like running out of batteries halfway through shaving. You can find out more about Anchor's batteries and the contest by going to the links in the video description. And one aspect of batteries I haven't talked about yet is power delivery. You know, how quick they can charge your device. This battery is designed to detect what you have plugged into it so they can charge it as quickly as possible. And don't forget to check out Brian's real engineering video about whether or not it's even possible to make enough batteries to power the planet. Thanks for watching.